As we see a rise in coronavirus cases, new mandates and restrictions are in place to help slow the spread. And last week, Governor Hogan credited Baltimore County with their efforts to enforce those restrictions. And joining us this morning with more on their plans to help stop the spread is Baltimore County Executive Johnny Olszewski. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Sure thing, Jennifer. Good morning to you as well. So last week, the governor offered you some high praise with your enforcement of these coronavirus restrictions and your social distancing task force. Can you tell us a little bit more about all that? Yeah, sure. I mean, as you've pointed out, we're seeing really uh, staggering spikes in new cases. Our hospitalization rates are about as high as we've seen through this pandemic. So taking our restrictions seriously and taking this pandemic seriously is really critical. <clears throat> we're thankful that Governor Hogan recognized the good work that we're doing in Baltimore County with our social distancing task force to make sure that people uh, are leading with education, but also following the rules. Uh, I want to applaud uh, County Executive Ball, who I know you just had on, who are doing similar things now in Howard County. Uh, we've conducted over 7,000 inspections with our social distancing task force since the start of this pandemic. We've had over 300 violations, uh, 23 hearings done before our liquor board with seven more to come. And, and again, <clears throat> we lead with education, but really where we have to, we cite owners who aren't doing the right things. We will close a business temporarily um, if they're not following the protocols. Because this is about saving lives and this is about not having to do additional restrictions. Um, so we're ramping up our efforts. We're hiring more people. We're expanding our hours of operation. Uh, we announced that partnership with Governor Hogan, with Maryland State Police and Baltimore County's Police Department. And this is about, you know, again, saving lives and making sure that the things that are in place to keep people safe are followed. Yeah, and it's not just about uh, actually enforcement, but education. That's always been key for you as well. You, you had launched earlier a whole social media campaign and on air as well. How is that going? Yeah, so we launched a Be Safe to Stay Safe campaign with uh, Hall of Famers, uh, Brooks Robinson, uh, Calais Campbell from the Ravens, which we're seeing a, a reminder that no one uh, is immune to it because even Calais as uh, part of the, the Ravens outbreak is experiencing it. And I wish him, him and all the Ravens a speedy recovery. But just a reminder, even a team with the resources of the Ravens, no one's immune. Um, and we've actually chosen to extend our campaign into the fall because we know we're facing probably our last big fight against COVID and we have to just buckle down one more time, wear our masks, keep the social distancing and washing our hands so that we can get through this so that we don't overwhelm our hospitals and that we can see it on the other side once the vaccine is available enough to really push back and help us win this fight against the, against the COVID-19 virus. And you talked about overwhelming the hospitals, but also you know that small business owners are overwhelmed as well. And so you're hosting a webinar to try to give some more information about what's been going on in your county, but also what's available to these small business owners. Absolutely. So it's the latest in a series of uh, webinars that we've given. This most recent one is going to be on Tuesday, December 1st, to help our businesses understand local and state orders to navigate the resources that are available. We have lots of grants um, and loan uh, opportunities for our businesses. We've already pushed out millions and millions of dollars in support to some of our hardest hit industries across Baltimore County. Uh, but really, this is about educating about what's allowed, what's not, trying to navigate the rules understanding what resources are available. The business community has been so resilient. Um, anyone who's interested in learning more through that webinar or pulling up old webinars um, can visit www.baltimorecountybusiness.com, baltimorecountybusiness.com. And most business owners are very familiar with what it means to get a loan, but a grant is a totally different, you know, ball of wax for them and trying to negotiate that can be very difficult. Do you have people that will walk them through the process? We do, and we talk to dozens of businesses every week in addition to individuals who are seeking jobs or unemployment benefits. Um, we've distributed over 8 million meals. So we have really an integrated system where if someone's looking for one thing, we can connect them to all of our services. Um, most recently, we just announced in partnership with the state an extension of our uh, restaurant grants. Um, so we're, we're providing up to $30,000 um, for affected restaurants. Um, those applications are open now. It, would, it will be part of the conversations that we have out there and the resources we're making available uh, because it's really about getting money in the hands of businesses as quickly as possible to make sure they get through this on the other side. We know that the winter months are coming, people are moving inside, um, which means that the viruses were sort of this double whammy where it's easier to spread and uh, it's you know really challenging us. But again, we want to support our businesses, tell our people to do the right thing so we can get on the other side of this thing. Well, and if the pandemic wasn't challenging enough, Baltimore County schools have become the victim of a ransomware attack. We mentioned that school is now closed Monday and Tuesday. What more do you know about this situation and what can we tell parents who are concerned about their students right now and also staff members? 
Yeah, I mean, it's disgraceful that we had this bad actors coming out, particularly in the midst of this pandemic, when our students are learning virtually to execute this ransomware attack. <clears throat> it's also deeply frustrating to our parents and students and educators. Um, I get it. Parents are right to have questions. The school system has been leading on the response to, so far. Uh, but in the meantime, we've really made sure that all of our resources are available to them as they work through the challenges presented. Uh, our police department is coordinating the state <clears throat> and federal partners, including the FBI. And we keep pushing the school system to make as much information as available as quickly as possible, uh, knowing that getting our kids back has to be a top priority. Um, supporting our staff members and families and parents is a top priority. So uh, we do know that schools are closed through Tuesday at this point. Um, but we're going to keep pushing for more information, regular updates to the public. Uh, and again, we're, we're fortunate there's no indication that the county itself has been compromised, but we are still doing audits and inspections just, just to make sure. Okay, and we know that people are probably comparing this to what happened in Baltimore City earlier this year. Are we looking at oranges and oranges or apples and oranges when we talk about this situation? Well, I mean, generally it's, it is, you know, it appears to be a ransomware attack, which is very similar. I think the investigation is ongoing. Um, and the school system is hopefully going to push out more information about the specifics of, of the attack and if it was, you know, a similar actor mm -hmm. or different. So those details, I hope, are coming out sooner to the public. The public is even, deserves to know um, as quickly and uh, as possible. And so we'll keep working with the school system and keep encouraging them to push as much information out as quickly as possible. All right. And we're going to end on a positive note. You want to encourage people to get out there and shop small businesses today. That's right. Uh, small business weekend uh, will we'll go beyond Saturday and, and really they've been hard hit. Um, whether it's uh, curbside pickup or wearing your mask inside or having them shipped to you, really the small businesses are the backbone of our communities and we want to do all that we can to make sure they're successful. So please get out, spend some dollars locally and uh, keep our main streets strong. All right, County Executive John Yelcheski, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your weekend. Always a pleasure. Same to you.